The third DCMA 14 point metric is looking at lags. And just like how leads were in logic, it's looking at the predecessors and successors, and it's looking for a positive number. Now, DCMA does allow a 5%. So if 5% of your task, total task, open task, have a positive lag, it is allowed. So what does that mean? It's you put a positive number, so you have a relationship of these two tasks, and you say, well, this can happen, but there's a five-day gap. Now, really, you want to just define what that five-day gap is. Just add another task and say, okay, this is what's happening. But if you're trying to only just put what you are doing in there and there is a lag to say, hey, this happens 120 days after this, you could put in that positive lag. And so you say it's finished to start relationship with 120 days in between or five days in between, whatever the number is. But you just gotta remember, your whole schedule can't be built with lags. So a lag is a positive number of a delay between a relationship of two tasks, but you can only have 5% of your task in the total project be lags. The only hesitation I have with using with lags is that it, they're hidden. So if your team is looking at your schedule and sees that there's a gap between two tasks, they won't understand why, because on paper and on the schedule, you don't see a lag. So I kind of don't recommend lags unless it's really, really pertinent and necessary. So a recap on lags is what is it? Any incomplete task that has a delay between the tasks. And why is this important? Because lags can have an adverse effect on the critical path, just like leads do, and any subsequent analysis. So it's better to add a task that represents what that lag is than to have a lag. Fields used to find this is we're still on the predecessors and successors field. So we're gonna be looking at those. And how do you calculate it? You're gonna count how many incomplete tasks have a predecessor with a positive plus sign and a number. And then you divide that again by the incomplete task. DCMA does permit at most 5% of your task have lags in them. They do allow that. But again, the goal is to just not use them at all if you can. Put those tasks in there that represent what that lag is instead of just putting a lag. An example of this metric and how to calculate it would be out of your 421 incomplete tasks, you have five of them that you filtered on and saw that they have a plus sign. Now, if they're not a lag, they're not going to have a plus. So, but you would say five divided by that 441 is 1.13%. So that falls within the 5% margin that DCMA gives you. And again, here's how you read it, whether it's in the predecessor or successor line. You have your task ID, the relationship type, that positive sign, which means it's a lag, not a lead. The other is a minus sign. And then you have the length of that lag. And in this case, it's 60 days. To find your lags in project, you're going to filter on your predecessor and successor fields and do the contains and put in the plus sign. This one's going to pull up just one. But then you also want to do this in your successor column too. And there we've got another one. These, this example is related. So this top example shows how we're using the lag. We just were told, hey, this is when the contract's awarded, and then here's when the delivery is. So 180 days is the lag. Now, DCMA does allow you to have 5% of your task to have a lag. But again, I advocate for if you know what the task is that's making up the lag, then put it in your schedule instead of using the lag. So in this case, what we're going to look at is put in that lead time. And yes, it's not your task. So this is from the OEM, and they're saying this is their lead time. They're going to be the ones that have that detail of what makes up that 180 days. But you can track, yes, it's 180 days. But then you actually have a task. Because when you look at it just without it, when you look at lags, and why I avoid lags, is because looking at your schedule and if somebody else is looking at it, they can't see what that lag is. They don't see predecessors and successors. That's covered up. So we're just looking at over here on the right side, and you just say, okay, why is it out that far? What's going on in between that? If you actually put the task in that says what that lag is, then that's when they can see it. They can say, oh, it's that lead time. This is what's going on. So it's a visual representation to help your shareholders know what's going on and why there's a gap between two tasks. They can't see the lag. 
So recap to lags is it's any incomplete task that has a delay between two tasks. And those lags can have adverse effects on the critical path. We want to avoid them as much as possible. We're looking at the predecessor and successor columns. Again, there's a lot of metrics that will look at these fields, and this is just one of them. And you're going to calculate how many have a predecessor or successor with a positive sign, and then take that count and divide it by the number of incomplete tasks you have. DCMA allows you to have no more than 5% of your schedule have lags.